tears But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night I go to Him in prayer He knows my every care And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right Now let us have a little talk with Jesus Let us tell Him all about our troubles He will hear our faintest cry And He will answer by and by Talk with Jesus, let us. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. We hear feel a little prayer returning. You know that a fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Just a little talk. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Just a little talk will fix it every time. Good job. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I want to welcome you all again to Cowboys for Jesus. Cowboys and cowgirls, we're glad you're here. Glad you're here in the sanctuary and glad you're online. So why don't you uh, pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you tonight, Lord. Whether it be in this sanctuary or whether it be online, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for Cowboys for Jesus. Lord, we thank you for uh, the blessings that you give us each and every one. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I know that Pastor Dennis is going to have a great message for us, a wonderful message for us this evening. Holy Spirit, I would just ask that you would anoint him, anoint him Lord, with a double portion. Lord, just be with us. We just want to glorify your name tonight. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just open and receive. Oh, let the sun.
sing this song with us. Oh, come and sing this song with gladness as your hearts are filled with joy. Lift your hands to sweet surrender to His name. Give him all your years of pain And you'll enter into life in Jesus' name Sing, oh Jesus Gives me 
to see you. We want to see you high and lifted up. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. Amen. Why don't you welcome with me, Brother Dennis Key. What I was saying, this week is uh, Pentecost. And it's 50 days from, uh, Pentecost is 50 days from Passover. And so this Sunday, I'm going to be pre preaching on Pentecost Sunday about Pentecost. But tonight, I just wanted to share some things about the Holy Spirit of God. You know, the Holy Spirit is, is a third person of the Trinity and is a person. It's not a it. It's not a force. It's not something floating around out there. But there is so much misunderstanding about the Holy Spirit. So many churches don't cover the Holy Spirit at all. Leave it out. But you're talking about one-third of the Godhead. And so I just want to share a little bit tonight about the Holy Spirit of God. I hope to cover uh, who the Holy Spirit is, why the Holy Spirit was sent to us, what the Holy Spirit does in us, and what does that mean to us. So that's kind of uh, a rough outline of where we're going. But let's get started. Romans 8. In uh, verse 1 and 2 says, There is therefore now no condemnation, condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Everybody say Spirit. A little louder, please. Yeah, yeah good. They want to hear you on Facebook. For the law of the Spirit of life... In Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And so, I think it's interesting. You can be born again. Come on now, stay with me. Don't turn me off. You can be born again. And when you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. Because if you're to be born of the flesh is flesh. To be born of the Spirit is spirit. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, you've got to be born of the Spirit. And so it's the Spirit that brings us the new birth. But you can be born again, you can have the Spirit of God in you, but not be walking, come on now, and living the Spirit-filled life. I know many Christians that boohoo the Holy Spirit, even though he's living on the, I mean, isn't that frustrating? I mean, that is to me. To know that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. And I'm, I'm messing up my sermon outline completely. But to know that God has given you his Holy Spirit and for you to not live by that Holy Spirit. Do you know the Christian life is so much easier when you follow the Spirit? It's frustrating when you try to live it on your own life. Uh, verse 5. Romans 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. So you can be born again, but have your mind set on the things of the flesh. Are you with me? Now, have I lost anybody? But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. See, there's a difference between having the Spirit in you and living according to that Spirit. Thank you for that. Amen. For the to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, God leads us by peace. When you're flowing in the Spirit, you're in peace. It doesn't matter if there's a, a coronavirus all over the world. If you're walking in the Spirit, you're in peace. Amen. Skipping over to verse 13, Romans 8 and verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. I don't know about you, but I'm a son, and my wife's a daughter of God. Amen? And we, as much as we possibly can, we are led by the Spirit of God. And we depend on the Holy Spirit each and every day. Verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a 
sound mind. It said in Second Timothy. But you received the spirit of adoption by, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You're adopted into the family of God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Well, I don't know about you, but most children want to imitate their father. And the best way you can do that is be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a personality. He's not an idea. He is a personality. It says in um, Romans 8, 27, that uh, who knows the mind of the Spirit? So a personality has a mind. A personality has a will. In 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 11, it says, uh, 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 as the Holy Spirit wills. He gives the gifts of the Holy Spirit as he wills. So he has a mind, he has a will. And then in uh, Ephesians 4, it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. So he has emotions, he can be grieved. So the Holy Spirit has a mind, a will, and emotion. What is the mind, will, and emotion? It's the soul. It's a personality. That's what it is. So the Holy Spirit is a being, is a, is a, is a person with a personality. The Holy Spirit is eternal. If you look in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2, it says that darkness was over the face of the earth, and the Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters. The Holy Spirit was there at the beginning of creation. If you go to Revelations, the 22nd chapter, the last chapter in the book of Revelations, and it says, and the Spirit says, come. And the bride says, come. So see, the, the Holy Spirit is with us from the beginning to the end. The Holy Spirit is eternal just like God. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. In Psalms 139, David says, where can I go to get away from the Holy Spirit? He says, I can't. And he, he describes all the different places that he could go, but the Spirit is still there. So the Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Holy Spirit, just like God, is all-knowing. For the, uh, uh, It says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, it says that uh, uh, the Spirit searches the deep things of God. So the Holy Spirit is all-knowing, just like God. And the Holy Spirit is all-powerful. In Luke chapter 1, it says, in the Holy Spirit descended over Mary, and she conceived as a virgin. So he, the Holy Spirit is all-powerful. So we see that the Holy Spirit is the third part of God. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16, there's a beautiful example of all three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. I want you to notice there it wasn't sprinkling water. He come up where? Out of the water. See, he came up immediately from the water. So he was baptized, in other words, by immersion, and that's what we practice here at Cowboys for Jesus. We baptize in a horse trough out there in the parking lot. So uh, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up. And by the way, that was free. I don't charge you for that. That's just part of this deal. When he, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open. So we got Jesus standing in the water, just being baptized. The heavens are opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God. We're talking about the Holy Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And then verse 17. And suddenly... So you have Jesus in the water, Holy Spirit descending upon him like a, a, a bird would come and land on your shoulder or something. But the Holy Spirit is coming down and a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So God the Father is speaking from heaven. The Holy Spirit is descending from heaven to Jesus to come and live in him. And Jesus is there on the earth, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we see that the, the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. Well, why was the Holy Spirit sent to us? In John chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, Jesus answered, most assuredly, he's talking with Nicodemus. Nicodemus has come to him at night and, and, and wants to know, is he really the Messiah? He says, but most assuredly, I, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. 
That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Well, what is it saying? To be born of water is, is natural birth. The water breaks, the baby comes. And so you're born of water. To be born of the spirit is a supernatural new birth, or if we call it born again, according to John chapter 3, you're born again, not in a physical birth, because Nicodemus says, how do I enter back in my mother's womb and be born again? So you don't, dummy. No, he didn't say that. He was very gentle. He says, no, it's not a flesh birth. It's a spiritual birth. You're born in your spirit. Because when we are born under the family of Adam and Eve, uh, under humankind, we are born spiritually dead. And so we have to be born again to spiritual life. And that's what it was talking about. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has fed us free from the law of sin and death. So we were born into the law of sin and death, but by the Holy Spirit, by the work of Jesus Christ on the cross and his resurrection that we just celebrated uh, seven weeks ago, because of that, then our spirit is born again. And it's a spiritual birth. So we see that he was sent, what? So that we can have the new birth. So that we can have the new birth. Um, First Corinthians 2, verse 14. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. People that are not born again, people that are just born of the flesh, can't understand us that are born of the Spirit. They have a hard time understanding why we do the things that we do, why we talk the way we do, why we act the way we do. I mean, you can see it in, in the political realm. You can see it in the social realm. You can see it... Uh, <laughs> among people at work? How many know the difference between somebody that's a natural man and somebody that's a spiritual man or woman? You can, you can tell it. You see it. Why is that? Because they cannot receive the things of God. You have to be born again. To have the Holy Spirit, you must be born again of the Spirit of God. John 14. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father... And he will give you another helper. Everybody say another. You see, Jesus, he was with his disciples. Jesus was there. He helped them to understand the spiritual things. He taught them. He was there to go along beside them. That word helper is to come alongside, parakletos. And, and it's to come alongside, to be with them. Jesus was there with them. And what he's saying, he says, I'm going to pray the Father that he will send you another helper okay and we'll go into this even more in a little bit but and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever see jesus wasn't with him forever jesus was there about three and a half years with his disciples but he's sending another part of the godhead the holy spirit that will never leave us or forsake us that will be with us forever amen the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. The natural man. They, 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 they don't understand the things of the spirit. But you know him, for he dwells in you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So what is he saying? He's telling the disciples. This is before he went to the cross. He's saying, I'm going to send... I'm going to ask the Father. The Father is going to send the Holy Spirit to you. He's going to come. He's not just going to be on you like he was with the Old Testament prophets. It talks about how the Holy Spirit descended on David, and he would sing, and he would praise the Lord. And all the, all the different prophets, the Spirit came unto the prophet, and he spoke forth. I was reading in, in Ezra, and it said, And the Spirit came to Ezra and said. And so, uh, is that, but he says, it's not only... Uh, it, it's going to dwell with you, but he's going to be in you. The Holy Spirit is in each and every believer that is born again, that has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and as his Savior. 
Amen. John chapter 16 and verse 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Did you know God is not a man that he can lie? <laughs> I, I read those verses like that and I think, well, why did he say that? Well, was, he did it for the disciples' sake. Okay? He said, hey, I'm telling you, you know, verily, verily, that's truthfully, truthfully, I'm telling you. You know, but he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Can you imagine that? Here's these disciples that have walked with him for three and a half years. They've gone side by side with him. They've taken step by step. They've seen the miracles. Uh, they, they're the ones that broke the bread and the fish and gave it to the people and fed 5,000. Man, in my hands, God's performing this miracle. I don't understand it. But that, that was Jesus in their midst. And he's saying to them, I'm going to go away, and it's to your advantage that I go. And they're saying, no, we want you here. We don't want you to leave. But he says, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I don't go away, the helper will not come to you. Why is that? Because where was the Holy Spirit? It was in Jesus. Come on now. The Holy Spirit was in Jesus. And so if Jesus is here, the Holy Spirit in him, he can't be with you. But if Jesus goes to the Father, the Father can send the Holy Spirit. And now, the Holy Spirit is not just in one. See, for Jesus to talk to Mary Magdalene, for Jesus to talk to John, for Jesus to talk to Thomas, he couldn't go to where Thomas is and go to where John is and go to where Mary is. They had to all be together and he said the same thing to each of them. Are you with me? I mean, that makes sense, right? Why? Because he was a physical being. But if the spirit that's not a physical being, but a personality, a person of the Holy Spirit, he can come when they are born again, come on, he can come and be in Thomas. He can be in John. He can be in Mary. And no matter where they go, they can have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that marvelous? We don't understand it. But did you know that all over the world there are Christians that are carrying on conversations with God even at this moment through the Holy Spirit? Come on, they're being led, they're being directed. They're following the will of God through the Holy Spirit. That's why it's to our advantage that he goes so that the Father can send the Holy Spirit. It's to your advantage that I go away for. If I don't go away, the helper, everybody say helper, will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. That word helper, I want us to, to just think and look about that, that that, that word helper there in that particular verse is alos parakletos. Alos parakletos is the Greek. And it means this. Because it's more than just the helper. Helper means to come alongside. But he comes alongside in these different forms. And, and I can give you the references where they come from. The comforter. He's the comforter. John 14 and verse 6. 2 Corinthians 1, 3. In other words... When, when we're down, when you're depressed, he's the comforter that comes and loves on you and tells you it's going to be all right. Come on. The helper, the comforter, the counselor. Did you know that this word counselor is the same word that we would use like for a lawyer? I think of a counselor, you know, you sit down and, and lay down on the sofa or whatever and, and it's not that kind of counselor. It's a counselor that gives you advice that will help you or that represents you. And that's what the word counselor there, Isaiah 11, 2, Romans 8, 14. So he's the helper, the comforter, the counselor, the intercessor, Romans 8, in verse 26. He intercedes. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Isn't it interesting? Jesus said that he intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. So we have the counselor, the lawyer, God, Jesus, sitting at the right hand of God. He is interceding for us. We have the Holy Spirit of God living on the inner side, inside of us that when we don't know how to pray for as we ought to, 
The Holy Spirit prays through us. Come on now. He intercedes for us, it says in Romans 8 and 26. So we've got the counselor, the intercessor, handling things down here on earth for us. Jesus at the right hand of God, handling things for us up in the heaven. How can we not win the case? Huh? Come on. We have got the helper, the comforter, the counselor, the intercessor. We have the strengthener. Philippians 4 and verse 13, Isaiah 11 and 2. It's the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, it's the Holy Spirit of God that comes in and strengthens us. Let the weak say, I am strong. You see, when, it's, when it seems like there's no way, the Holy Spirit is there to say, yeah, Jesus has made the way unto you. He's the teacher, 1 Corinthians 2. Uh, first, uh, first John 2, John 16. He's a teacher. The Holy Spirit will teach us. The Holy Spirit will come in and teach us the Word of God. You can, it's so hard to understand the Bible if you just read it as a natural man. Did you know there's people that are teaching in college? They're teaching Bible courses. Come on, I took one when I, when I was going to a university. I took a Bible course, Bible survey course. And it was taught by somebody that probably is lost as a goose. They knew the Bible. Come on. They had read it. Intellectually, they knew it. But there was no spirit, no life in it at all. I was so disappointed in that course because I was expecting, oh, man, I'm going to, you know, I can get college credit for taking a Bible course, you know. Hallelujah. It was just three hours, so it was okay. He's the teacher. He will show you all things. He will teach you. And he's the standby. 2 Corinthians 12, John 14. He's the standby. In other words, when you just don't think you can make it, he's standing right there beside you. He's your fortress. He's your high tower. He's your strength. He's your teacher. He's your intercessor. He's your counselor. He's your comforter. He's your helper. The Holy Spirit is our guide. He shows us the way. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 7. I want to read this. It's uh, verse 7 through verse 10 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. See, those that are natural, they, they don't understand the things of the Spirit. For which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they knew that they were crucifying the Son of God and that he would rise again, see if they had known the Scriptures and had the Holy Spirit to teach them to them, they'd know that just as Noah was three days in the belly of the well, that the, the Lord would be three days in the heart of the earth and would raise again, come back to life. But they didn't know that. I mean, they went ahead and crucified him and fell right into God's trap for the devil and his demons. In 1 Corinthians 2nd uh, chapter, verse 9 now, it says, But as it is written, Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. You know, I'd much rather do what God wants done than what I want done. He's got so much better in his plans than what we can ever do. Think about verse 10. But God has revealed them, what? All these great plans. God has revealed the mystery of the ages. God has revealed these great plans that he has for us, the purposes and the, the desires that he has for us. It says in verse 10, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. That's the spirit of truth that I was talking about. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity that lives on the inside of us. I want you to get this, folks. The Holy Spirit was sent to be our helper. The Holy Spirit was sent to give us direction in our life. The Holy Spirit was sent to be our uh, comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, strengthener, teacher, our standby. In other words, he's always with us, never leaves us, never for, forsakes us. The Holy Spirit is with us. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
John chapter 16, verse 13 through 15, or 26, thank you. I forgot that one. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance that I have said to you. Did you know that, that as you study the Bible, as you read the Holy, Holy Word of God, as you read Jesus, the written Word, it comes inside you, especially when you pray, Holy Spirit, guide me in my reading. Holy Spirit, speak to me truths from this reading. It comes on the inside of you, and it says, don't worry what you're supposed to say. When you're in a tight situation, when you're brought before kings, when you're brought before rulers, when you're in the workplace, when you're in that situation with somebody else and you don't know what to say, and you're trying to think, oh, I want something spiritual to say. I want something that will minister to them. He says, don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit, what? will bring it to your memory. The Holy Spirit will, don't plan the words you're going to say. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Because the Holy Spirit searches all the things of God. He knows what that person needs to hear. And so you speak according to the Spirit. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 13. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. You see, when Jesus was walking on the earth, he said, I don't do what I want to do. I do what the Father tells me to do. What I see my Father do, I do. What I hear my Father say, I say. He was obedient to his Father. And the same thing, the Holy Spirit is obedient to speak the things that Jesus has already spoken. And so he is there not of his own authority, but whatever he hears is what he speaks. That's what he says to you on the inside. And we will do well if we will say what the Holy Spirit tells us to say. If we will do what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. If we will live as the Holy Spirit tells us to live. For he who lives according to the flesh will cru or according to the Spirit will crucify the flesh. Amen? Uh, verse 14. He will glorify me. You see, the Holy Spirit is glorifying Jesus, the Son. The Holy Spirit will glorify me, for he will, not, he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. And what the Father desires for you, those good things that you don't even understand that are greater than we can, uh, abundantly above greater than what we can understand, He's got those plans for you. Well, how am I going to find out what God's plans are in my life? Because Jesus purchased them for us. Come on now. God's plans were there. Jesus came to earth and bought them for us with his blood. He paid the price so that we could have those gifts, so that we could have that uh, abundance, so that we could have that peace, so that we could walk according to God's plan for our life and live in this that he has for us. And how is it carried out? It was bought and paid for by Jesus, and it's given to us. That mystery is revealed to us through the Holy Spirit as we learn to listen to him. Uh, just think about Jesus. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. It says he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. He performed miracles of the power and, and cast out demons by the Holy Spirit. He was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit. If Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit when he walked the earth, how can we think that we can live a Christian life without depending upon that same Holy Spirit? I'll tell you what, your life will be radically changed if you'll learn to depend upon the Holy Spirit and look to him to guide you. It might not make sense in the natural, but what is it? The natural things can't understand the things of the Spirit. But we walk according to the Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit, what does he do in us? He indwells us. He teaches us. He reminds us. He guides us. He directs us. He comforts us. I love this one. Uh, skip down Ephesians 1 and verse 13. Ephesians 1 and verse 13. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. 
Did you know nobody can take you out of God's hands? Because your salvation is sealed by the Holy Spirit. Don't ever think, oh, man, I messed up. I did something so bad, God will never forgive me. No. He already forgave you through the blood of Jesus. And he sealed it by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our seal. So one of the things that is so important is we're not only born again by the Spirit of God, but we are sealed in that salvation. In other words, you know, when, when you seal something, you got to break the seal. Well, they got to break the Holy Spirit to get at us, and that isn't going to happen. The Holy Spirit seals us in our salvation with the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So what does that require of us then? We have the choice. We have to follow him or we don't follow him. Ephesians 5 and 18 says, Be filled with the Spirit. But 1 Thessalonians 5 19 says, Do not quench the Holy Spirit. So what it's telling me is I can either be filled with the Spirit or I can have that Spirit in me and I can quench it, I can choke it. Come on. It's still in me, but I'm not going to pay any attention to it. And I don't know about you, but I'd much rather follow the Spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus that's living in me now than the Spirit of sin and death by quenching the Holy Spirit. And that's what you're doing. You're living by your flesh instead of by the Spirit if you quench the Holy Spirit. And so you need to give the Holy Spirit preeminence in your life. Let him guide you through the word as he speaks the words of Jesus. Amen? So what I do, how do I get involved with the Holy Spirit? Well, I want to just give you a couple of ways, and we'll close with this. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 14. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This is Paul's closing to the church of Corinth in his letter to them. And what is it saying? Here again we see the, the Godhead, the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion or fellowship or partnership is the same Greek word meaning all three of those of the Holy Spirit be with you. That word, kononia, means participation, a joint venture, a partnership, a communion, a fellowship. In other words, uh, if, you, if you want to get real exact, it means uh, intercourse with, of complete joining together of you and the Holy Spirit, your spirit and the Holy Spirit. And what is it saying? He's saying that, that's the type of fellowship that you should have. Not only the grace of God. In other words, we don't do it on our own. It's God's grace that, that, that comes to us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love. We're to walk in love. And we are to have that type of communion, that closeness with the Holy Spirit as we walk this earth and we live with him. It also says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. Now hope doesn't disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts. How? By the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. See, you say, well, man, it's hard to love that person. I, I know I'm supposed to love everybody, but man, Brother Dennis, you just don't know this person. Well, if you'll let the Holy Spirit work in you, that Holy Spirit will shed God's love abroad from you to those other people. And so when you think it's out of your ability, it is. Depend on the Holy Spirit ability. So we have fellowship with him. We walk with him by letting the love of God be poured out by the Holy Spirit that's in us. It's his heart that pours out this love to us. And then in Acts chapter 1, in verse 8, how else are we to act with the Holy Spirit? It says, 
Jesus speaking, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the Holy Spirit gives us the power to be a witness. It gives us the power to share Jesus with someone else. It's the, it's the, we need to pray for that Holy Spirit power. In Luke 24, in, in verse 49, it talks about that very thing. That we're to pray for the manifest power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, did I put Mark 16 down there? Nope. Mark 16, uh, verse 15, if you would, please. This is a last that I want to close with. Mark 16, verse 15, and we'll go down to verse 20. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is given to every one of us. This is a command from Jesus to his disciples. And I don't know about you, but I'm a disciple of God, and that's like Jesus speaking to me. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel. Where's your world? It's Jerusalem. It's where you live. It's Judea, the area around you, Comal County. Come on. It's Samaria. Texas, until the uttermost parts of the earth, the United States and all the world. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. In other words, you've got to receive him by faith. But he who does not believe will be condemned. But you've got to give them the choice. You've got to tell them about Jesus. How can they accept Jesus if they don't ever hear about him? So it's our job to tell them. Next verse, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. Are you a believer? I'm a believer. And so I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell somebody about the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit, come on, shed his love abroad in my heart to them. And these signs will follow as I obey the Holy Spirit. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, demons, and, and the devils. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Though a thousand fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, it's not going to come near me. That's Psalm 91, and I, I stand on that, especially with this virus running around. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. You see, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. Sunday, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But we have not only the fruit of the Spirit, we have the gifts of the Spirit. And he's given them to us to be able to use, why? To witness, to have the power to witness to different people to meet their needs. There are people that are crying, dying, hurting out there in the world, and they need somebody to give them hope, somebody to give them the answer. And we're it, folks. Verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And the Father sent the Holy Spirit to us. Verse 20. And they went out following the Holy Spirit. Come on now, I'm putting my version in here. And they went out full of the Holy Spirit. They went out following the Holy Spirit, being led by the counselor, the, the comforter, the helper, the strengthener, the teacher. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. You say, well, I'd sure love to see a miracle. Well, then follow the Holy Spirit. Tell somebody about Jesus and you'll see the miracles. You'll see lives changed from darkness to light. You'll see depression changed into joy. You'll see sadness turned into fellowship. Come on, folks. Uh, we just we need us to follow him as we follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. So be imitators of God as dear children and walk in the Spirit, and we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer as our praise team comes up. Father God, we praise you and thank you, Lord, 
for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus. You loved us so much that you sent Jesus to die for our sins, to bring us health and deliverance, that he paid the price. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we thank you, dear Lord, that when he went back to heaven, when he was raised from the dead, victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and he came to sit down at the right hand of the Father, that you sent us your Holy Spirit to give us power to witness, to walk in fellowship with you, to let your love be shed abroad from our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit. We call upon you, Holy Spirit, fill us now with your Holy Spirit at this time of Pentecost and help us to be witnesses for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This song is like a prayer. And it's perfect for what we just learned tonight. Holy Spirit. for being here at Cowboys for Jesus on this Wednesday night. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook. Be sure to share it on, uh, on your line so that others can see it also. And share Jesus with somebody this week.
yes. dependent on the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. to lead you and guide Hallelujah. you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching Cowboys for Jesus. Be blessed in Jesus' name.